good morning and happy new year everybody here and those that are listening and watching at home i have a few announcements but we'll start off with uh, repeating the purpose oh, no, 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 to share through worship service fellowship learning and hospitality And first of, first of all, I better tell you about VISTA. Um, your orders for VISTA are due next Sunday, and they'll be delivered on the 14th. So please don't forget, VISTA is due next week. Um, the offering envelopes for um, 2024 are available at the back, and please pick them up so that they're not left over to be delivered. Um, Myra would like help to remove the Christmas decorations, and they're being done, and that's being done on the 13th of January. So please mark that on your calendar. Volunteers are, are very needed, and it's lots of fun to do it together. Are there any other announcements? If not, are there celebrations? And I have one for Sheila Gillis. On Tuesday, she has a big birthday. So happy birthday, Sheila. So let us, let us prepare for worship. After a short technical... Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Good morning. <laughs> Glitch number one, <laughs> and hopefully the last one. Please join me in the responsive call to worship. Like the shepherds, we come to the stable, uncertain of what we have heard and seen. Longing to hear words of peace and joy. Like the wise ones, we have journeys to make, gifts to offer, and hope in our hearts. That this world can change for the better. This morning, we gather to share the light of Christ. We gather in wonder to share our joy and thanks for new life. Our waiting is over. Now is the time of fulfillment and celebration. We light a candle of hope, hope for ourselves and for God's beloved world. We light a candle of peace, peace in our hearts and on earth. We light a candle of joy, joy to the world and within our whole being. We light a candle of love, the promise of God's love for us and for all creation. And now the season is fulfilled and we light the Christ candle, the light of the world, the light of possibility. Amen.
they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves for the presence of the Lord among the trees in the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, Well, I heard the sounds of you in the garden, and, and I was afraid because I was naked, and, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? And the man said, Well, the woman uh, who you gave me, um, she gave me fruit from the tree, and, and so I ate it. And then the Lord God said to the woman, what, what is this you have done? And the woman said, Well, the serpent, the serpent tricked me, and I ate it. And so then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because of what you have done, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and the dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. second time from heaven and said by myself I have sworn says the Lord because you have done this and you have not withheld your son your only son I will indeed bless you and I'll make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore and your offspring shall possess the gate of the enemies and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing." for yourselves because you have obeyed my voice.
The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied exultation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For a child has been born for us, a child given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Great will be his authority, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. But you, Bethlehem, David's country, the runt of the litter, from you will come the leader who will shepherd rule Israel. He will be no upstart, no pretender. His family tree is ancient and distinguished. Meanwhile, Israel will be in foster homes until the birth pangs are over and the child is born, and the scattered brothers come back home to the family of Israel. He will stand tall in his shepherd rule by God's strength, centered in the majesty of God revealed. And the people will have a good and safe home, for the whole world will hold him in respect, peacemaker of the world.
sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. And she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken up while Quirinius Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered, and Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, 
the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the guest room. Now in that same region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger.
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem Village, Judah territory, this was during Herod's kingship. A band of scholars arrived in Jerusalem from the east. They asked around, where can we find and pay homage to the newborn king of the Jews? We observed a star in the eastern sky that signaled his birth. We're on a pilgrimage to worship him. When word of their inquiry got to Herod, he was terrified. And not Herod alone, but most of Jerusalem as well. Herod lost no time. He gathered all the high priests and religious scholars in the city together and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? They told him, Bethlehem, Judea territory. The prophet Michael wrote it plainly. It's you, Bethlehem, in Judah's land, no longer bringing up the rear. You will come the leader who will shepherd rule my people, my Israel. Herod then arranged a secret meeting with the scholars from the East pretending to be as devout as they were. He got them to tell him exactly where the birth announcement star appeared. Then he told them the prophecy about Bethlehem and said, go find this child. Leave no stone unturned. As soon as you find him, send word, and I'll join you at once in your worship. Instructed by the king, they set off. Then the star appeared again, the same star they had seen in the eastern skies. It led them on until it hovered over the place of the child. They could hardly contain themselves. They were in the right place. They had arrived at the right time. They entered the house and saw the child in the arms of Mary, his mother. Overcome, they kneeled and worshipped him then they opened their luggage and presented gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In the beginning was the Word of God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light 
so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlivens everyone, was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among them, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth.
in gratitude for the many blessings that we have received. We give back from our hearts and hands as we are able. Our offering will now be received. May these gifts and those given through PAR continue the ministry here at Trillium and throughout the wider community. Amen. Let us pray. God of star and stable, you lead us to wonder and to hope. You gather us together to hear your promise of love. As we gather, we offer our concerns and our dreams and our hopes and fears. Like the shepherds who sought the stable, we seek your promise of peace. We pray for your people, broken by violence, those who live with fear and those who live without hope. We remember your people in Myanmar, the Ukraine, and Israel, who live in the midst of conflict, and we pray for your courage and peace. Like the wise ones who dedicated their gifts, we remember those in need. We pray for those who are lonely, hungry, or forgotten, for those who are ill in body and in spirit, for those who are confused or afraid, we pray for your joy and love for all your people, especially those we remember now. Holy One, you came as a child, offering renewal of spirit and of living. May our, may our prayers be a new beginning for healing, truth, and trust. May we embody love that is forgiving, compassionate, and gracious. May we send back the angel's song of peace and joy. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who became the Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And please stand as you are able for our last hymn, Joy to the World, number 59 in your hymn book.
Kathy and I would like to thank everyone who took part in the, in the service this morning. We really appreciate your, your help with this. So, we have all been blessed by God. Look bravely into the future and see the promise of a new year. Feel the presence of God in the world with you and go forward in God's strength, love, and grace. May the blessing of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and within you today and in the year ahead. Happy New Year, everyone.